Hello and welcome to Otten Math. In this edition of Otten Math, we're going to talk about graphing and writing equations of parabolas. Right, so what does a parabola look like? Well, I've got a bunch of different parabolas. I have parabolas that face up, I have parabolas that face down, I have parabolas that face to the right, and I have parabolas that face to the left. I have parabolas that are centered at the origin here, and I have parabolas that are translated off the origin. And we're going to talk about all those today in this edition of Otten Math. All right, so let's talk first about shape and orientation. So first, if I have a y is equal to x squared value, then I know that uh, what I tell my students is I have a happy face parabola. So my happy face parabola faces up, and I have an axis of symmetry that runs right down the y-axis. So the axis of symmetry is that line that divides the parabola into two symmetrical halves. So y is equal to x squared is an equation, basic equation or a parent equation for a happy face parabola that faces up. I can also write <clears throat> my equation as y is equal to negative x squared or negative y is equal to x squared and that's going to be an unhappy parabola. Right? I have a negative sign, I have an unhappy parabola, parabola faces down, parent function has a vertex at the origin, my axis of symmetry still is the y axis. So y is equal to negative x squared or negative y is equal to x squared gives me a parabola that faces down. Third, I can uh, have a parabola that opens to the right. In this case, now I'm just switching the x and y values. Right before I had y is equal to x squared. Now I have x is equal to y squared. So in this case, the x values are always going to be positive, right? So anything squared is going to be positive. So the parabola opens up to the right. And I can also have a parabola that opens to the left. And those equations would be negative x is equal to y squared, or x is equal to negative y squared. Okay, moving on, let's talk more about what a parabola is and some of the components of a parabola. So a parabola has an axis of symmetry, and the axis of symmetry is that vertical or horizontal line that's going to divide the parabola or bisect it into two symmetrical halves. So I call the axis of symmetry AOS. And AOS is the vertical axis here. It also happens to be the y-axis, and this represents an equation y is equal to x squared. In this case, I have uh, a parabola that opens to the right. My axis of symmetry is a horizontal line. In this case, it's y is equal to 0. So again, axis of symmetry bisects the parabola into two symmetrical halves. Now, the vertex is the highest or lowest point on the graph for a parabola with a vertical axis of symmetry. So I had the unhappy face parabola. In this case, I have a happy face parabola. Um, either way, <clears throat> the vertex will be either the highest point or the lowest point. In this case, it's the lowest point. And in the case where I have negative y is equal to x squared or y is equal to negative x squared, it's going to be the highest point. In a parabola that faces right or left, the vertex is going to be the furthermost left or right point on the graph uh, with a parabola that has a horizontal axis of symmetry. Now sometimes we have a parabola that has a translated vertex, which means the vertex is no longer at the origin. So in this case, <clears throat> I still have a vertical axis of symmetry, but the graph itself, the vertex, shifts from the origin to a point. And we can figure out what that point is because that point will be represented by the letters HK relative to this formula on the left-hand side. The formula in this case will be 4P uh, times Y minus K is equal to X minus H squared. So Y is equal to X squared is the parent formula, and we extrapolate that to the translated parabola 4p y minus k is equal to x minus h squared, where the vertex is going to be h and k. Now we'll talk about what p means in just a little bit, but let's just say for now that I can shift my uh, parabola in any direction, right? I can move it around and I can place the vertex at any location. That vertex is always going to be the hk value. Alright, so now I can uh, also move a parabola that faces right or left around as well to change the vertex. So my, my parent is, my parent function is x is equal to y squared. And again, my uh, vertex is hk. But what I've done is I've exchanged the x minus h and y minus k values from the prior 
uh, parabola which had a vertical axis of symmetry to one that has a horizontal axis of symmetry. So now I have 4p times x minus h is equal to y minus k squared. That has a horizontal axis of symmetry. And again, here I have 4p times y minus k is equal to x minus h squared with a vertical axis of symmetry. All right, so two different equations, one with a vertical axis of symmetry here, and then another with a horizontal axis of symmetry, all begin with 4p. One term is going to have no squared value, and the other term will have a squared value. So just for fun, let's take a look at this particular problem. Uh, we're going to ask, what is the vertex, what is the axis of symmetry, and does the graph face up, down, right, or left? Right, so the vertex is going to be at the point hk. Remember, h is always associated with x, k is always associated with, with y. So my vertex is going to be negative 3 and 7. All right, so what is my axis of symmetry? Well, let's consider which way does a graph face? Does it face up or down, right or left? Well, in order to think about that, we need to discover what the parent function is, and it's really y is equal to x squared. So we know the graph is going to face up. And I know that my vertex is negative 3, 7. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, or something like that. And so it faces up this way. And I can tell just by graphing it now that my axis of symmetry is going to be vertical, right? It's going to split or bisect the parabola. And then as I look at the graph, I notice that the value, the x value, does not change. So I can say that the equation for the axis of symmetry is x is equal to negative 3. And then also answer simultaneously as I graph uh, whether the graph faces up, down, right, or left. I can see that it faces up. Okay, let's take one more question. What is the vertex? In this case, very straightforward. My vertex is negative 9 and negative 7. So it would be, uh, the answer would be E. And then I have one last one for you. What is the equation for this graph? So I'm going to let you think about it for a second. I'll come back and I'll tell you what the answer is. All right, well, given what we know, we know that the vertex is 6, negative 2. Um, the h value is 6, so it corresponds uh, to a value of negative 6 next to an x value. And the graph also opens to the left. Uh, so the parent function is going to be negative x is equal to y squared, or x is equal to negative y squared, one of these two. So we look um, down the row here and we see that this value is not going to work. Uh, this value could potentially work. Uh, this value could potentially work, uh, this value will not work, and this value could potentially work. All right, so we've identified the parent function. Uh, based on the parent function, B, C, or E will work. Now we, we'll take a look at the vertex to figure out which one it matches up with. So in this case, I want to have Y plus 2, or Y minus minus 2. So I have a Y plus 2 here, and then an X minus 6 here. So the answer in this case is going to be E. All right, so let's talk about focus and directrix and why we need to talk about focus and directrix with a parabola. So focus and directrix are very important in defining what a parabola is because a parabola is a set of all points which are equidistant from the point, the focus, and a line called the directrix. So a point, uh, the focus, is going to be on your axis of symmetry and it's going to be a distance uh, along the axis of symmetry from the vertex. Right, so I'll call that value the p-value. So remember when we were talking about the equations for a parabola, I gave you an equation uh, that was 4px minus h or 4py minus k. So remember that p-value that I had discussed earlier, this is where it comes into play. So when we talk about the p-value, that p-value is a distance from the vertex to the focus along the axis of symmetry. And that p-value helps determine the focus which helps determine the uh, form of the graph. Because again, a parabola is the set of all points which are equidistant from a point called the focus, here's my focus, and a line called the directrix. So if I were to take any point on my parabola, let's just say it's this point, and I were to draw a line from this point to the focus uh, of the parabola, and then a line to the directrix which uh, made a perpendicular line or segment with the directrix, then those two lines or segments would be the same length. And in this particular drawing, they're not really, um, they don't look that way, but in real life, 
when you have uh, better artists rather than myself, then you'll see that this distance and these distances are going to be the same. So again, the distance between the focus and a point on the parabola and the distance uh, from the directrix and a point on the parabola are going to be the same. Now the p-value is also going to tell us what the distance is to the directrix along the major axis. Right? Because if this vertex is equidistant from the focus and the directrix, then I can also find the point um, where the directrix runs through on the uh, axis of symmetry by marching off p units away from the parabola along the axis of symmetry. Okay, so now we're going to talk about graphing and writing uh, equations of translated parabolas. And that's really the end of our discussion for just the basics of parabolas. I'm going to give you this information and then you can come back while we uh, handle specific problems in the next edition of Ott and Math. So what I want to say here first before we move on and close out this particular video is that we have a vertex. We define that as an H and K. And then we have a focus. We define that as P units from the K value in this case with a uh, vertical axis of symmetry. So it's going to be H comma K plus or minus P depending on whether the uh, parabola faces up or down. Then I know my axis of symmetry is X is equal to H and I know my directrix is going to be X is equal to K plus or minus P. In this case this is for parabolas that have a uh, vertical axis of symmetry. So I just want you to put this in your head and to think about this for a while. We'll come back to this when we do actual problems. Right? In this case where I have a horizontal axis of symmetry, my vertex remains HK. My focus now changes to H plus or minus PK from H uh, comma K plus or minus P. My directrix is going to be X is equal to H plus or minus P. And my horizontal axis is going to be Y is equal to K. So I'll leave this up here for you to copy. Just have this written down for a reference uh, before we move on to writing equations and graphing translated parabolas. Before we finish out the video though, I just wanted to make one quick correction and that is, uh, in this case, the directrix is going to be y is equal to k plus or minus p. So when I have a parabola that fo uh, faces up or down, my directrix will be y is equal to k plus or minus p. So I know a lot of variables here. It will probably seem confusing to you right now, but if you have this information, uh, as we work through the problems, it will become, again, easier for you to understand. So again, just write it down and come back and talk to us in the next edition of Ott and Math as we write equations for and graph uh, translated parabolas.